It goes without saying that Australia is one of the most spectacular destinations to visit as a tourist and backpacker. And year after year, Australia is the number one destination for British backpackers to spend a year or two on a working holiday visa, where we have the chance to not only explore this beautiful country, but also have the opportunity to work here, integrate into a true Aussie life and earn money to sustain this lifestyle, living the dream down under. And in the next few videos, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the Northern Territory, a part of Australia I have never been and a part of Australia often less travelled with remote landscapes stretching as far as the Red Centre. I've flown out to Darwin to see what life can be like for working holiday makers looking to come to Darwin to work and travel. What are the job opportunities like here? What bucket list experiences are there to tick off? We're about to find out in this two-part series. First of all, I have reached Australia in the fastest time it's ever taken me to come directly here from London. In fact, I'm actually finding it very hard to believe right now that I'm standing here right in the middle of Darwin when literally yesterday I was just making my coffee at home as usual and now I'm in Australia. <laughs> I feel like all I did was edit a couple of videos and take a little kip and now suddenly I'm here in Australia, the other side of the world. I had the breeziest flight with Singapore Airlines. It went from London to Singapore, which took around 13 hours, and was on one of those double-decker planes, you know, the A380s, which are just absolutely glorious. Even if you're in economy, you just have so much more space. I had some fish, I had some coffee. I could actually plug my laptop into a proper plug socket, which is amazing for me as a travel vlogger. I paid around 12 pounds to have Wi-Fi for the duration of the flight. So I was chatting to my friends. I was watching TikToks. It honestly didn't even feel like I was really on a plane at all. And then we landed in Singapore. I just had a really quick one hour layover. So I just scurried to my next gate, but luckily they were actually quite close to each other and I made it on time and I hopped on my plane to Darwin. And that flight was only four hours and I literally slept the entire way because I was just on an absolute crash from that first one. And so before I knew it, we'd landed and we're here. Singapore Airlines are the only airline that you can get to Darwin from London so quickly and swiftly with just the one layover. And I really can't say enough good things about the amenities, the food, and the friendliest staff that I have encountered in a long time on a flight. Now, I feel like there is no better way to start this adventure through the Northern Territory than going to see some crocodiles. So we've come about an hour away from Darwin to somewhere called the Adelaide River, which is famous for having a high concentration of saltwater crocodiles. The cruise hasn't even started and we could already see crocodiles going past. Look, their favourite food in this river is freshwater turtles. Uh, and it makes up the biggest part of their diet. Now, after the turtles, uh, you move on to other crocodiles, crabs, catfish, any other fish they can catch, uh, freshwater whip rays, shovel noses, saw sharks, <coughs> small bull sharks. Then you move on to the land-based stuff. Over the years, we've seen our crocodiles with water buffalo, cattle, bush pigs, dingoes, snakes, guanas, kangaroos, wallabies. Uh, pretty much if it's made of meat, it's on the menu. This river is full of sexually mature males and the thing about those is that they will not tolerate another budding sexually mature male. If they find one, they will chase them out or better yet, kill and eat them. They will however sometimes tolerate females to be in their area because the females can come in handy during mating season, but that is the extent of their oh so romantic relationship. If the males do happen to run into a female outside of mating season, there is every chance that they will kill and eat them. So our guide was giving us some really interesting facts the whole cruise, but I think my favourite one was about the teeth. So he told us that crocs get a new set of teeth three times a year. They just keep growing through and so they actually go through over 3,000 teeth in their lifetime, which is just absolutely insane. Um, and he made a funny joke about how that's why there is not very many crocodile dentists because you don't need them because the new teeth are just always coming through. That was very cool. By far the biggest crocs I've ever seen in my life. And they were saltwater crocodiles, even though they love living in the fresh water. Obviously the Adelaide River is a freshwater river. The difference between the freshwater and the saltwater crocodiles is that the crocwater crocodiles, croc the saltwater crocodiles 
can actually live in salt water, but they choose not to because they just prefer the fresh water. But fresh water crocodiles can only live in fresh water. But the salt water crocodiles are way bigger and more powerful anyway. But that was mad. That was absolutely mad. Now in this episode, we are going to be exploring Kakadu National Park, one of the largest national parks in Australia, covering over 20,000 square kilometers, which is almost half the size of Switzerland. Kakadu has been home to the Aboriginal people for more than 65,000 years. First stop in Kakadu is our stunning accommodation, which is right in the heart of the national park. And not only am I staying here, but it is also where I'm going to be picking up my first shift. Today, I'm gonna be working at Kawinda Lodge, which is one of the nicest resorts here in the Kakadu National Park. I've got my uniform on and I'm gonna be helping out with some bartending and some housekeeping, both of which I don't have a whole lot of experience in, but this is one of the jobs that you can do as your regional work here on a working holiday visa in Australia. There are backpackers doing all kinds of jobs here at Coinda Lodge, working on reception, working behind the bar and housekeeping. I've never worked behind a bar before and well, I really have just shown myself up here pulling this pint. Pint, half pint, whatever it is. To be honest, it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I just, it's not bad for a first go, but it's not amazing either. Now at home, I wouldn't say I'm the tidiest or cleanest person, but I do think that there is something so satisfying about cleaning someone else's space. They do say when it comes to cleaning your own space that you should imagine that it belongs to someone else and you will do a way better job and be way more productive. Housekeeping also feels a lot easier when the space is as beautiful as the glamping pods here at Coinda Lodge. And they actually have loads of accommodation options here as well as the glamping to suit whatever style or budget that you have when visiting Kakadu. They also have a restaurant on site called Mimi's where they put on a deluxe buffet breakfast. You can get pretty exquisite lunch and dinner time meals here too. We've ordered the indigenous tasting platter at Mimi's tonight and oh my goodness, it's just arrived. It looks incredible. And if all that wasn't enough to make Coinda Lodge a super special accommodation here in the Kakadu, it is located right around the corner from Yellow Water Cruises. Okay, we've just hopped on board one of the Yellow Water Cruises, which is pretty much one of the quintessential things to do here in the Kakadu National Park especially if you are like a wildlife lover. I think we're gonna be seeing a whole lot of bird life and wildlife, maybe some more crocs today. The water's looking absolutely beautiful. Look at those reflections. And there's a lot of cars going, not cars, boats. <laughs> There's a wild horse out there, the black horse where all those egrets are congregated. And the magpie geese are known as Bumbaru. You might know it as the Jabaru, technically they're known as black neck stalk. Or in language known as Juggernaut. So the Ginga is the saltwater crocodile. Even though all this water, as I have said, is all rain fed, it's completely fresh water. So the name saltwater crocodile is a little bit misleading. A lot of our crocodiles are dark in color because when they spend more time in fresh water, they do end up being quite dark. But if they spend more time in the salt water, they'll be lighter color, almost yellowish. This is a swimming bird and they have polarized vision. That one is the white-bellied sea eagle second largest bird of prey So in this Australia. eagle, which cuts the glare and allows them to see straight through the water, so they don't see the reflection on top of the water like we do. They see everything swimming around down there. Male crocodiles get much bigger. They can get to about five, six meters. All the crocodiles we can see, imagine all the crocodiles we don't see. I did not think it was possible to see this much variety of wildlife in one cruise. But you know what? Seeing all this beautiful water is really making me want to go wild swimming. But I can't go swimming here unless I want to be eaten by a croc or two. So we've driven down the Kakadu Highway, grabbed a backpack and some trainers, and we're off to find a swimming spot. We've just rocked up at the start point to our little hike to Maguk Waterfall, which is one of the largest 
waterfalls in the Kakadu National Park and it's one that we can swim in as well and it's also extra exciting because this waterfall is closed during the whole rainy season so basically like the Australian summer it's closed and only recently I believe just last week it's opened up again which is super super exciting we drove about 10 kilometers down a super like dusty and a little bit of a bumpy dirt road to get to the start point of the hike and now we're gonna have around a two kilometer hike to get to the actual waterfall itself the bark is like um sheet of paper oh that's cool yeah thanks these paperback trees paper bark trees <laughs> is what you need to look out for if you're ever lost in the forest because these show the direction of where the water's gonna be. We did get warned about this, that we would get wet feet. I'm just wearing my regular trainers as opposed to my water shoes because you do want to wear some like decent shoes because it is a bit of a walk. Actually, I need to record this on my Apple Watch. What am I doing? I didn't do it from the start, oh no. Is that the water? Is actually gloriously warm. It's not cold as you might expect. Okay, uh, yeah, we made it to the Maguk waterfall. Yeah. Maguk, Maguk. It's so, so, so beautiful. And at the moment, there's hardly anyone here. We've come quite early in the morning around like 8, 8.30. And it just looks like a swimming pool. I can't wait to go for a swim. the Maguk waterfall now after the most gorgeous swim feeling so refreshed but the water was just the perfect temperature you know how fresh water is normally very very cold like you imagine swimming in a waterfall and it's pretty freezing this was glorious just not quite so warm to call it a bath but just the perfect temperature it was amazing and now we are heading back and it's not quite two kilometers, it's more like one to one and a half. And I'm literally looking like a triathlete walking in my trainers and in my bikini because we don't have time to dry off. But that's okay, we'll have time to dry off on the walk. Now we've come to Jabiru, which is kind of the central town of Kakadu. It's the service town, so they have like a supermarket, they have a few hotels, they have a petrol station and all the things like this. And we're actually gonna be staying in Jabiru at the Mercure Crocodile Hotel, which is the first hotel in Kakadu, which came here in the 80s, which is super exciting. And if you actually look at this hotel from uh, an aerial perspective, you'll see that the whole hotel is literally in the shape of a crocodile, which is pretty cool. And if you can't tell, I've got my new uniform on. I'm gonna be doing some work experience here today. I believe just some reception work, helping them on the front desk. It's not my first time working on a hotel front desk, thankfully. And in fact, I'd go as far as to say that hotel front desk reception work was my favorite job that I ever did before becoming a YouTuber. Um, and it was one of the things that I did when I was on my own working holiday visa. So this is, all feels very nostalgic and like we're going back in time, um, but I'm very excited. It also feels very fitting to be working in the Crocodile Hotel considering how many crocs I've seen over the past few days. With its unique architecture, this hotel has become quite the landmark in the area. So the super cool thing about if you're working in Kakadu National Park is that you've literally got the National Park on your doorstep to explore on the daily. So this evening, we've come to do one of the most iconic things that there is to do in Kakadu National Park, and that is visit Ubia, especially at sunset time. Now, Ubia is where you can get one of the most stunning lookouts over Kakadu National Park, but it's also where you can see some famous rock art done by the originals and find out about the creation of time, the story of the creation of time. So we've set off around 4.30 p.m. There's actually a free tour where you can get guided around 
card by a ranger at 4.30 p.m. every day, or you can just do your own self-guided tour. So we're just having a little explore now before having a beautiful picnic at sunset. The rock art at Ubir represents thousands of years of Aboriginal cultural heritage. The paintings depict various subjects, including ancestral figures, animals, and traditional stories. The art is created using natural pigments and showcases the artistic and storytelling skills of the Aboriginal people who have inhabited the region for thousands of years. We're walking across these huge rocks now to the lookout. We can see that the sun is going down. I feel like it's going to be so beautiful. All around Ubir Park, as you're looking at the rocks, you can just see the rock art on the walls as well. And if you're lucky, you get a little infographic about what it all means and what it's all about. Oh my God, look at this view. I suddenly feel like I'm in Africa. I feel like I'm in the Ngorongoro crater, but a bit greener. This is absolutely beautiful. And this is where we're gonna be spending the sunset. Oh my gosh, so we've just got to the top of the very top lookout rock and our guide Matthias has just put us on the most gorgeous little picnic spread. It's like there's going to be a proposal up here or something, which actually would be a very good idea. <laughs> what have we got Matthias? we got carrots, cucumbers, grapes, grapes, tomatoes and some special stuff from Kakadu, like lemon myrtle infused macadamia oil. Oh yeah and daka, kakadu taka. Oh. You can see all this macadamia and uh, nuts from kakadu. We've got yeah. meats, cheeses, strawberries, yeah. breads, crackers, olive oil, and a few bevies. This is glorious. Seeing the sunset here in Ubir is a quintessential and not to mention free thing to do here and I couldn't have planned a better way to spend my final evening in Kakadu National Park. And that is the end of this episode in the Northern Territory. In the next episode we're going to be spending some more time in the city of Darwin and doing one of the wildest activities I could have ever dreamed of around Litchfield National Park. So stay tuned to see what more there is to do and places you can work as a backpacker in the Northern Territory. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you then. Bye-bye.